All right, welcome everybody to the Sacramento Speaker and Entrepreneur Network uh, webinar. It's the second webinar of the year. It is uh, March 6, 2018, and uh, we are now international. We have Stacy Berger on the line today, and uh, she is going to be our speaker in a little bit, but she's calling in from Canada, and so this is a great thing for our group. I know we have over 2,600 members, and most of them are in the Sacramento area. Most of you are. But by opening us up to webinars, we can now reach all over the place, anywhere, right? I mean, it's unlimited. So share this with your friends because I think we can really grow this group. We can grow the networking. I mean, a lot of, uh, a lot of the faces in the room today are not even coming to our regular luncheon. So it's kind of nice to get a totally different feel. And yes, the luncheon's tomorrow and I'll get a whole different group, which is going to be fun. Except for Chuck. I think he'll probably be there, right? <laughs> which he's very loyal. <laughs> um, so uh, first we want to do, uh, so the reason that we do these webinars is because, like I said, I have a lot of members and they can't attend the luncheons. And especially since I moved them from dinner or dinner time, it was like from 6 to 8 p.m. in the evening to a lunch time. <clears throat> I wanted to be able to offer something because I wanted to be home with my family. It was a life, lifestyle choice for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. And since I run the group, I get to make the decision. But I did take a poll <laughs> for those who actually uh, helped me decide this. I didn't just on a whim uh, change it to luncheons. But, um, but then I wanted to add webinars because I know so many great speakers and entrepreneurs all over the world that I wanted to invite to our group because I think our group is amazing and we do a lot of great masterminding. So this group is for you if you want to make more money from your business, from your speaking, you want to learn how to become a speaker, you want to learn how to be an entrepreneur, you want to share resources with each other, joint venture, network, um, power partner. I mean, do what you can do. I know Chuck met somebody that from the group and they're now doing a, a presentation thing together. And so, and I've met a lot of people that I've joint ventured with and there's a lot of podcasters on too. So, you know, when you find people that have other stages and podcasts, I mean, there's all kinds of opportunity to network and share each other with each other, uh, with each other's, um, following, so to speak online and offline. So do you want to do as much networking as you can inside the meetup group even you know you can message people inside the meetup group uh, and then you can also um, apply to speak I really only have maybe one more in-person speaking spot left for this year I'm kind of booked so but I have a waiting list because you never know some people every once in a while will say ah, something came up and I can't and then I have to pull from my waiting list so you never know plus I get asked for speakers all the time from uh, people in not only in Sacramento but from conferences all over the place because they know I run this group and they know that I know a lot of speakers so I do get asked a lot for hey I need some speakers or and I always ask them like what do you what topics do you need on what do you need and then I'll put it out to the group or I'll think of somebody that I've met on one of these or at a, a networking event and I'll say hey I've got an opportunity for you to connect with so-and-so and so you definitely want me to know what you speak about um, and then I will also advertise or market any events that you host, your own webinars, teleclasses, Zoom calls, or live events uh, in the emails that I send out to the group. So in case you didn't know that, um, you just have to send me a little blurb. You probably saw recently in the last few days, I sent an email and one had uh, member announcements in it. One was mine, but one was somebody else's where they were um, marketing a, um, an open, night, open mic night here in the area. So. Um, make sure if you have something going on, let me know because I can share it with all of our members. Okay. So, um, that's all I wanted to share tonight. The rest of the time is for you guys and to networking. Um, so in case you're not um, familiar with the agenda, we're going to start with introductions right away for those of us who are here live. Uh, and then reminders. I've already did the reminders and announcements. And then we have our speaker, Stacy. And then um, I usually give a little five minute tip of some sort, depending on the time. And then we do a five minutes in the spotlight. It's kind of like a mastermind. So be thinking, those of you who are on live, at that time, I'm gonna just, we're just gonna draw names kind of thing. And I'm just gonna go, okay, this person, right? And, uh, and then you get to uh, be in the spotlight, so to speak. So if you're working on a book or a talk or looking to get 
a book somewhere or you have questions, you want some help brainstorming about something in your business or you're speaking, then you get to share what that is and then we all get to help you and, and mastermind some answers and give you resources and things. So that's what we do with the five minutes in the spotlight towards the end of the call. Throughout the call though, I want you to be putting stuff in the chat room. So if you're, if you're on video, you want to open your chat box, which is down at the bottom of the screen and be um, putting stuff in there, like what you do, right? I'm a, a speaker on, like for me, I'm a business and marketing coach. I speak on all kinds of marketing topics, business topics, um, making money, automating, systematizing, and I'm looking for speaking gigs all over the US and in Canada, right? And um, then on my website is jumpstartyourmarketing.com. So that's what I would put in the chat room, right? Or connect with me on Facebook, and here's my Facebook link. You can go to Facebook and copy it over, right? So be really interactive with what you do. At the end of the call, I will actually copy and paste the whole chat room, and I will put it in the follow-up email that I send the recording in to the entire membership. So even though they weren't here, they will get to see this recording and they will get to see who is here and all the links and everything you put in there. So another thing you might put before the end of the call is like, I have um, a free training. It's a speaker training. This is just my example, you know, free speaker audio training, six steps to becoming a speaker, jumpstartspeakertraining.com. And so I would put that in as like my free gift, right? So it's kind of like we can go around on a networking event, but we're gonna do it in the chat room mostly, okay? So that way we can keep our introductions short in person, give time to Stacy and the masterminding and stuff, but everything's still taken, um, taken down and you can totally utilize and connect with people. Does that make sense? Any questions? I know I said that really fast. Okay, because I, I know we only have an hour, so. <laughs> All right, uh, so I wanna start with introductions. Let's see. Um, Stacy, if you want to go first and then we'll come back around to you and uh, so unmute your line if you would and then just, you know, like 20 seconds, 30 seconds max, you guys, and then we'll go on from there. All right. I am Stacy Berger. I am from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So brought the group internationally, which is exciting. I am a professional speaker, teacher and coach. I work primarily with entrepreneurs who are ready to take their results to the next level and, and really happy to be here. Thanks, Katrina. Awesome. How about Anna Thea? You go next. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? We can hear you. Okay, great. My name is Anna Thea. Happy to be here. I actually am an intimacy educator. And so I really, I have a school on Teachable and I help women understand their bodies better, relationships better, and really how it's the art of self-love. And so it, you women, I'd love to invite you to my website, onathea.org. I'll put it in the chat and you can actually take a love test. And what I hear more from women than anything else is, you know, I need to connect more to my feminine side. And so this love test will tell you how much you are connected to your feminine side. It's powerful. So, mm. yeah. I'm probably not that. No, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting better. I think we all need to work on it. You right. Know? Okay, yeah. Gary, I see you're unmuted. Gary, can you go next? And then we're going to go to Michelle and then Amanda and then Steffi Joe just to keep you, keep it going. Okay. Hi, my name is Gary McKenzie. And I work with individuals and organizations that want to add speaking or use speaking to increase their visibility, their influence, and their income. And also, I'm a certified NLP instructor, so I work with individuals as to how can they introduce and use neuro-linguistic programming to improve their lives and connect with other individuals and improve their communications. So that's what I do. I love working with speakers and entrepreneurs. And that's a new topic for you. So do you have a talk around that yet, Gary? You working on it? I am working on it. I've given <laughs> a couple of short webinars and Going to expand that topic. Awesome. Good for you. Thank you. That's a needed topic. In fact, we should have you talking about that sometime during, or you're already slated to talk, I think. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that in December. December, but that's so far away. Okay. I know. We'll find a way to get, do it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Michelle. Hello, everyone. My name is Michelle Calloway with a C, and I am a speaker, author, and tech founder of a company called Revealio. It means to reveal something magically. It is an augmented reality video marketing company, meaning that we can take your physical, tangible 
items that you use to promote yourself, whether it be a business card, a book, or a banner, postcard, poster, and we can make it come alive with virtual content such as a video and call to action buttons that allow people to go instantly to your website or schedule a call with you. So I'm an expert in using technology to enhance human connection. Awesome, thank you, Amanda. Hi, um, so uh, excuse the sweatshirt. <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't expecting to be on video tonight, but <laughs> I uh, just started my own business. Uh, for now, it's going to be virtual assistants doing project management for people. But what I'm working on developing is a teamwork program to go into offices to show people how different personality types may cause conflict if you don't understand one another, but the more you work on realizing each other's differences, the more you can contribute to a common cause mm. and work better together. And so speaking is something that I've enjoyed doing here and there. It's something that I will be doing when I get my program put together. So I'm kind of in the learning phase of everything. Well, I just said this earlier today on a podcast is don't wait to put your talk together to go get booked because yeah. people don't book you tomorrow. They book you three, five, 10 months from now. Gary's not talking till December for God's sakes, right? <laughs> you have plenty of time to put your talk together. So go do get booked first and then do it. Okay. <laughs> Trust me. Right guys. Am I, am I right? Right. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Glad you're here. Steffi Joe. Oh. I gotcha. Oh, I gotcha. No. <laughs> okay. You let me out. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm Steffi Joe. I'm in um, Incline Village, Lake Tahoe, currently. And I, I help women feel fabulous when they walk out their door by understanding their authentic style. And I love this topic, and it goes into understanding your essence type. And um, I'm passionate about this. I have a book that is almost ready for print. Oh my God, I'm holding my breath. I just approved, um, just gave final approval for everything. It's called F, That Little Black Dress. And it is about finding your authentic style without getting lost in the process. And I'm so excited. And that's the topic that um, I'm looking to speak about this year. So <laughs> got to... Put myself out there, Katrina. I know. You're hiding in your little snow village. I'm hiding. I'm hiding. <laughs> but there's no, you know, there's, there's no hiding anymore. I, I, well, I just got to give you some kudos. I, I love the title of your book. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, yep. Thank you. She's thank very you. bold. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go to, is it Irving? Irving, uh, yes. then uh, Chuck, and then Tanya, if you're listening, I don't know if you're there for sure, but you'll be next after Chuck. Okay, go ahead, Irving. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Irving Wayne. I apologize for not muting earlier. My, back, my wife is in the other room talking uh, on another conference call, too. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm new. Well, I've been, I, uh, the reason why I joined the group, I'm, I teach real estate classes. Uh, so I've been doing speaking, I guess, so to speak, but uh, I, I want to become better at it. Um, so I've been teaching two or three day classes on real estate investing through throughout the U.S. I've been doing that for about three or four years now. Uh, just moved to the Lincoln Rockland area. And so looking to connect with local entrepreneurs and get better at speaking, actually. So. Awesome. Well, welcome. Chuck. Awesome. Hi, Chuck Hooper here. I do speaking engagements and coaching for speakers, mostly at the corporate level. My presentations are on storytelling, storytelling with data, presentation skills, analytical processes, and developing a new one on critical thinking at the university level to try to resolve some of the discrepancies where the professors say students lack critical thinking skills and students say professors are dinosaurs. <laughs> Trying to tie that together. Well, good luck with that. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. And Chuck's a regular at our in-person luncheons here. I'll I see you tomorrow. Yeah, so is Gary. Um, okay, Tanya, are you there? I'm not sure if you're just listening. Oh, good. She's on. Hey, sure, I am. Um, 
thriving. <laughs> so, um, awesome. Speak up a little bit if you can. Okay, let's see. But don't hurt yourself. I know. <laughs> Is that better? Not much. Not much? Okay. How about there? Maybe getting better. Keep talking. Can you hear me now? <laughs> we can a little bit. Just turn up your speakers, everybody. Turn up your speakers. All right. <laughs> Go ahead, I'll Tanya. Make, I'll make it quick. My name's Tanya Rios, and I'm from the Auburn area. And um, I am a emotional health coach, emotional eating health coach, and also a EFT practitioner. And so I. Looking forward to um, having some speaking engagements, and I just met Katrina, and she told me about this group, and I'm just excited to be a part of it, and I'm um, looking forward to the talks tonight. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Okay, so we got everybody here. Um, don't forget to post in the chat. I only see Michelle so far. So I know you guys are all listening intently at everybody else, what everybody else does. And we don't want you not paying attention to Stacy, but um, we want to know what you do and we want to capture it as well so that you can maximize your exposure here, right? <clears throat> okay, so let's see. We've um, any questions regarding the format or what you're all doing no okay well, let's just dive into the talk and then that way it gives us even more time for five minutes in the spotlight so be thinking if you do have a challenge of something that you want help with be thinking of what that could be in case we draw your name um, and then what was the other thing I was gonna mention I can't remember I don't know um, I don't know so I'll think about it while we're on here all right, so I want to introduce Stacy Berg. Is it Berger or Berger? I'm so sorry. It's Berger. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bad host. I didn't clarify that in the beginning. <laughs> All right, so I want to formally introduce Stacy here uh, as a professional speaker, teacher, and coach. Stacy Berger can help you live a life you love living. Stacy specializes in helping entrepreneurs and business leaders build their dreams, accelerate their results, and create richer, more fulfilling lives. For 18 years, Stacy has studied and implemented transformational success principles. She is a certified dream builder coach, certified life mastery consultant, has a degree in business management, and an honors business marketing diploma. She combines her years of experience in top corporate operations, marketing, and multi-million dollar acquisitions with a deep holistic understanding of success principles. Stacy's the creator of Mastery of Mind and the co-author of Mentoring Women Leaders 2. She has spoken internationally to thousands of individuals and has appeared in numerous local, national, and international publications and webcasts. Uh, if you're looking to increase your clarity, amplify your confidence, and achieve your next level of success, Stacey Berger's coaching programs can get you there. So tonight she's talking about the three keys to accelerate your results, and uh, she wants she's going to share um, those three keys is in less than ten minutes or so. But we want to. Uh, give her enough time to share some good juicy stuff and then open it up for a little bit of Q&A if you guys have any Q&A. So take it away, Stacey. Awesome. Thanks, Katrina. I'm very glad to be here tonight and I'm going to do my best to get 10 minutes, but to make sure that you walk away with some powerful keys to take your results to the next level. So to do that, I want to start with a story and it's about a, a mama mouse who is leading her baby mice through a back alley and they come around a corner and as they come around the corner there's this great big tomcat who's ready to pounce and as the tomcat's about to pounce this mama mouse she stands on her hind legs and she starts barking like a dog ruff, 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 and startles the tomcat tomcat runs away and the mama mouse turns to her baby mice and she says that's the power of knowing more than one language and I love that story for a couple of different reasons. One is that that cat really represents what was standing in the way of the mouse wanting to get where she wants to go and represents in each of our lives that there's something usually standing in the way between where we are and where we want to be. And there is a language of success. 
And when we understand what that language of success is and how to produce results, it can really transform any area of our life. And so to understand that, there's th uh, 10 principles that I typically work with. We're gonna cover three of those to take your results to the next level. And so the first thing to understand is that typically our, our passion, our desires, they're born out of two different energies, which are our longings and our discontents. And so to understand what, what our passion is, what our purpose is, what our intention is, what our desires are, that the universe speaks to us in two growth signals, which is longing and discontent. And once we understand that those two things in our life, they're feedback to help us really get clear about where it is that we want to go, it's a really powerful energy because a lot of times when we look at our discontents and when we're, where we're hitting up against that wall, it's really easy to get discouraged. But the discontent is actually that, that universe, that growth signal speaking to us. And so in order to understand how to create results, there is what I like to call the results formula. And the results formula goes something like this, that our thoughts create our feelings. So the thoughts that we think, they create a physiological response. They create our emotions. And for those of you who said you do EFT or NLP, our emotions is what creates our actions or our inactions, right? Based on if we're, if we're feeling sad, depressed, frustrated, worried, anxious, we take different actions than if we're feeling confident, empowered, energized. So our thoughts cause our feelings, our feelings cause our actions, and our actions or our inactions is what creates our results. And so often we look at our results, we look at what's happening in our life, and we call that our cause, or we call that our because. I, I can't create this result because I don't have the contacts, because I don't have the experience, because I'm just starting out, when the true cause of our results is in our thoughts. And once we begin to, to really connect with that idea, in order to create a new result, we need to go to, to our thinking, which brings us to the first key in accelerating our results, which is having a clear vision, having a really crystal clear picture of where it is that we want to go. And what I find with people that I typically work with is a lot of people say, I, I know my goal, I know where I want to go. But as we really dive into that, it's fuzzy at best. And I like to say that clarity is power. The more clear we are on what it is that we want to create in our life, which is often born out of those longings and those discontents, that clarity creates power. It's, it's like an energetic blueprint. And we understand this when we're designing a home or we're doing renovations. We need a blueprint in order to build that result. And it's the same in our lives. So if you're looking to improve your results in your business, if you're looking to improve your results in your relationship, your health, it really starts with having that crystal clear image of where, where you want to go. So what is it that you're creating in 2018 and how clear are you where where you wanna end up and where you wanna be. So once we have that crystal clear image, the second key to accelerating our results is the power of decision. And de decisiveness, successful people are, they make decisions quickly. And the key with deciding for something is deciding before you know how it's all going to work out. Being able and willing to decide for your goal, to decide for the result in the absence of knowing how it, it's all going to happen. So when Katrina says, book that speaking event now, before you do that, it's once it's on the calendar, you're committed. There's a different energy. And oftentimes where we get to the place where I've got to get all my ducks in a row, I've got to figure it all out, I have to have that crystal clear path laid out. And it's when we make the decision, there's a different energy. And that's when the universe really rushes to our aid. So to think of maybe in your life where you're sitting in an indecision, where you're wondering, what should I do? Should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? 
and how how would it feel and what would that look like if you shifted that energy into a full full decision and once you decide for it that's when the energy shifts and that's when the different opportunities results circumstances begin to show up to support us in in moving forward so having a crystal clear vision deciding for it and the third key is befriending your fear so what happens is when we have a crystal clear image and we make a decision for it there's a part of us that's like yes i can do this i got this and then there's this other part that rises up and says who do you think you are you've never done that before you don't have the experience and what is that voice that's that's the voice of fear it's the voice that says what if you fail what if nobody likes it what if you embarrass yourself it's the voice of fear and what i mean by befriending fear is that understanding that anytime we're going to grow we're going to do that with the sense of fear. It's so easy to look at successful people and forget where they've come from and forget that they've done that and they've really learned to understand that when we leave our comfort zone, that's what rises up fear. It's the part of you that wants to keep things status quo. So in order to move forward, we need to befriend fear. We need to understand that fear is going to be a part of our journey. And so when fear shows up, the, it, it's the part of us that says, well, what if you fail? What, what does that look like? Um, when fear shows up, the, the powerful tool to move through that is first of all, to connect to the vision. If we don't have a powerful vision and a powerful, and we're not in love with that, Napoleon Hill talks about having a burning desire. I'm sure many of you have uh, read Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich with a clear vision and a burning desire for it, placing our attention back on the vision. Oftentimes we, when fear wins, it's because our attention is on that little voice. What if I fail? Everything that could go wrong. So by placing our attention back on the vision and then taking an action step, taking an action step towards the vision. It doesn't have to be giant, but what's one thing that I can do today to move that vision forward and taking those consistent baby steps that's what leads us towards our goal so placing the attention back on the vision what's the step that i can take and keep taking those steps and inside that process we move outside the comfort zone katrina can i share one more thing or are we so just to um fear can be very sneaky fear doesn't show up to say i'm here to kill your dreams fear says i'm here to keep you safe i'm here to make sure you don't embarrass yourself and so some of the ways that fear shows up is it delays us it says i'll do that but i'm going to wait till i have my talk figured out i i'll do that i'll get started in the summer i'll get started in the fall so it delays us it distracts us says well i'm just going to send this email first i have to get everything ready for my taxes first. So we get distracted. Um, the third way fear can show up is dissuasion. That's the little voice that talks to us. And the final way that fear can show up, and again, it can be really sneaky. I call it DEFCON 1, which is a military term, right? Be on high alert. And that's where we actually create disaster in our life so that we don't do the thing that's going to move us forward. So when we can start to recognize that delay, distraction, dissuasion, and that disaster, that's actually that status quo arguing for our limitation. It helps to befriend it, put our attention back on the vision, take an action. And those are three keys to help accelerate your results. So there we go. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Everybody give her a little hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A round of applause. <laughs> that's awesome. So how did you get started teaching this? Well, yeah, I, I was in the- for her. Raise your hand. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so my path, I um, have been mentoring entrepreneurs for over 18 years. And um, I had three little kids at home and there was many days where I was off to work while they were still in bed and coming home, they were back in bed. So I just had this longing to first of all have more impact in the world, but also have the flexibility to be at home with my kids. 
and I made the decision without knowing what that would look like to make a change and led to this path. I love business, love personal development, love spiritual development. And so it's led me on this path of, of being a coach. So I've been in my own business for three and a half years and created this really incredible um, lifestyle for myself and supported hundreds of people of really reaching their dreams. Yeah. I can't imagine leaving the house when your kids are in bed and coming back when they're in bed. Has anybody ever done that? That's just, that's not a, that's, I'm so glad you made that call. That's great. Yeah. And what you said was so important. I see it all the time with entrepreneurs is make a decision. Oh my God. Like <laughs> you have to make decisions faster. Money follows speed is what I always say. Money yeah. follows speed. You want to make money quicker, make it faster decisions. You know, are you going to do this program or that program? Are you going to do a membership or are you going to launch a six week group program? If you can't decide, just pick one and go and you can always do the next one next time or whatever. Right. People sit on their decisions. Any other questions though? Anybody have a hand up? Or if you're on the phone, just unmute. I can watch you. No other questions. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks for sharing. Actually, I, yeah, I Anna Thea. You know, I do have a question because it's interesting, this fear thing, it's sneaky. It's not so direct. It pulls back and I'm doing something. I'm stepping into an area that I haven't ever done before, which is an online launch. Mm. You know, I've done teleclasses and I've promoted myself a lot, but this online launch, there's a lot of technical stuff behind it. And, uh, you know, I, I can tell that there's that fear is there, that fear factor of, oh my gosh, you know, I'm stepping into a total unknown zone. And when you hit a technical wall, you hit a technical wall. You know, so it, it, I think there is fear there. And I just wanted to ask you, Stacey, how do you, you know, do you have any recommendations for uh, a befriend? I love the way you say befriend your fear. That's awesome. So do you have any, any recommendations with that? Yeah, a couple things. So especially when you hit what feels like a brick wall, which is a, a technical glitch. So here's the way I describe it is we're, we're living here. Our dream is here. Our goal is here. And in between there those two things is that invisible boundary. And so any time that you find yourself stuck um, where things aren't working out, understand that, hey, I'm about to grow here and I'm just bumping up against this invisible boundary or fear. And what happens for many people is they bump up against that and they go back to the familiar, right? Kind of hands up in the air. Well, you know, it's technical, nothing, not much I can do. So that's what delays us, distracts us. And so we go back to the comfort zone. And so in order to keep moving forward, it's being able to befriend it, recognize, I see what's going on here. I'm about to grow and I'm about to sabotage my own results. And what's one thing I can do towards my dreams? So maybe the technology is not working out, but there's something I can do. There's something I could be doing that would move me forward. What is that? And there's always something we can do. And as you take the step, you can watch those other barriers move out of the way. So going back to, Anathe, why you're launching this program? Why am I doing this? Why is this important to me? Connect with that vision. And then what can I do? I love that. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, great question. Awesome. Any other comments about the topic in general? All right. Give her another hand, you guys. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I want to. Um, uh, I'll just share something really quickly. Um, a five-minute uh, hot seat, so to speak, like a tip thing or something. I don't know. I usually in the in-person meetings, I um, give some kind of a training, and so because we're so limited on time on the webinars. Uh, I never know what to say in five minutes, you know, so, <laughs> but one thing I was sharing on a podcast uh, earlier um, was how to craft your talk so it's easier to remember with less notes or wordy PowerPoint slides. So I thought that might be kind of fun to talk about. And how many of you have, are always struggling to put less on a PowerPoint slide and, or, <laughs> right? Cause you feel like you need to put so much either to trigger your remembering what to say. Well, that's how I started doing it, right? I, I mean, I was so scared of PowerPoint in the beginning. 
when I was designing my presentations, I, I would do little note cards and stuff. But then one time I messed my note cards up. Oh my God, that was a disaster, right? Anybody been there? Like, ah, and uh, that was a fail, epic fail. And so I thought, okay, that's not going to work. Like, how are we going to remember until you got, now I can do my talk in my sleep. But in the beginning, it wasn't that easy, right? So I do encourage notes. So don't get scared, Amanda or Irving. Don't get, like, I do encourage just being yourself and going up with notes until you can really work it out um, or doing the PowerPoint if you feel comfortable. But not a lot of venues that you speak for free well, for 20 or 30 minutes or the typical venue you might have easily to get booked at. Not a lot of them have um, PowerPoint capabilities, right? So you do have to remember your talk. So I, I'm a visual person. I don't know how everybody else is, but I envision an outline of my talk. So I have like four points in my intro and three points in my body and then a transition statement. And then I have, I always know my clothes. Sometimes I have a this or that close, and sometimes I just have a one thing close, right? And the close doesn't have to mean you're selling something, but if you can think of your outline or your talk as more of an outline, and each one of those points in the middle, of the actual to uh, topic, um, can be a story or a case study and then a, a point, a tip you want to make, right? A story, a case study, or and then a tip you want to make, that kind of thing. So think of it in terms of maybe a visual outline or maybe a flow chart if that's helpful, or even a mind map, or I don't know if you're into pictures and things like that, but um, if you can associate a picture with almost every position in your topic or in your talk, every point in your talk, then uh, you can put a picture to it, then you can just pop a picture on the slide. And I know at my last event, I actually made more memes too, which was really cool. I, you know how me memes, anybody not know what a meme is? It's an image that we're using for social media these days, right? With usually a, a, a picture on it with some words on top instead of just the, it used to be you just put the picture on the slide and the words on top of the slide. But now you can create a meme and put that as your whole slide if you want to. And so I've been doing more of those, which are, um, a good visual and I'm getting a little bit more creative with the graphics around that um, and you can do some of these really easily on canva.com and things like that but um, but yeah using the wordy slides not necessarily a good thing although I still get I do give a talk called marketing basics for consistent cash flow and there's 10 things that I teach most entrepreneurs need to know these you know be doing these 10 things eventually it does not have to be doing all, all at one time but I can't remember the 10 things. Like there's no way that my brain when I'm up on stage or even on an audio like this is gonna be able to remember 10 things in a list and be able to list them. Now I don't go into depth in the talk because I don't have time, but I like to give people like a little checklist. These are the 10 things that you wanna add to your marketing strategy, right? So that's a slide that I have like 10 things on with a picture. And so in that case, you know, I, I, don't, I don't fault myself for it and I don't even pretend to be perfect, but, um, so I would just, you know, cut yourself some flack, slack on the PowerPoint thing is my opinion and uh, do what you need to support you to give good content and connect with the audience because what matters most when you're speaking is the connection with the audience. Whether you're on video here or speaking in person, don't you guys agree? I mean, connection with the audience, if you lose the audience or they don't connect with you, they are snoozing or they're on their phone. I mean, sometimes we want them to be on our phone because we want them tweeting what we're saying, but, uh, but if we don't want them not paying attention, right? So connection is the most important part. If you're too focused on your content and you're not connecting, that's not going to do you very well. So my advice is to put as much content as you need to on the slide as a crutch for now and just keep weaning it off as you don't need it anymore. That's just my little opinion. Now there's some people on the line that have, uh, some professional speaker training and some Toastmaster speaker training. So I'd love to hear comments. If anybody has any comments on PowerPoints and presentation style, anybody want to share their tips or anything like that of what you guys do? Yeah, Michelle. Well, this is a very basic one. You, you probably teach it too, Katrina. I'm sure you do. Um, how important it is to not read your slides. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I, I love personally when I put my presentations together I, and I'm working on uh, getting better at Facebook lives 
and engaging the audience by asking them questions where they can put a one in the chat box or a yes or a no, engaging them with the uh, questions to, so that they respond or quick little polls. There's little apps out there that you can use to do polls too. Right. And those are really important. So if you're doing Facebook lives like that, you want to pay attention to the strategy. Don't just turn the video. I'm, I'm so bad about just turning it on and just going and not having that strategy in place, but you're so right. And, and you can now get people on an email list or on a chat bot and all that kind of thing. If they put certain things in the comments. So have a strategy when you go into it, but that's a little technology learning curve right there, you know, just a little bit. I just upgraded actually yesterday to the Zoom webinars so I could do interviews with two people on streaming on Facebook Live with Zoom because you can't do that unless you're on Facebook Live. I'm sorry, Be Live TV, and I don't like Be Live, and it wasn't live. You know, I, I do. I do a Facebook Live with another woman. I just I put her on. She's actually just in a little window, but I didn't know uh, Zoom actually does Facebook Live to people. It huh? does. It was super easy. It was super easy. Wow. But it's a forty dollar a month upgrade to from the fourteen ninety nine. You're paying fifty four mm. ninety nine a month now. And it goes. It goes to YouTube. So if you're only if you're not going to do it very often, it's a thirty day thing. So if you pay it today, then you can tell it to not auto renew and then just pay it when you need it kind of a thing. So it'll be $40 anytime you want to do it, but, um, or you can just keep it on auto renew. I found out. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to say too, it, it automatically, um, you can set it so it goes on YouTube. So it feeds to Facebook right. and YouTube. From at the Zoom. same time. Can you do it at the same time? Yeah, I believe so. I'll have to I look have at it. You mean that, that the, the Zoom, that upgraded Zoom account will then also then put it out to Facebook and to uh, YouTube? I believe, yes. you, I believe you can choose both, Katrina. It goes to your business page on Facebook. Then I don't know if you can do both at the same time. I saw the YouTube on there, and then I w I'm guessing that it goes live on YouTube. I'll check. I haven't done a live video on YouTube <laughs> before. I only post videos on YouTube. So. There's so much to know about this video stuff. Let me tell you, I have a, a few friends who teach nothing but video marketing. So I would defer to them. I know enough to be dangerous and then and enough to get started and, and enough technology to get started and where not to spend your money on it. <laughs> so, any other comments or questions about the PowerPoint stuff, presentations? I have a comment about PowerPoint, What I just yeah. find that, you know, in using my PowerPoint, what I have just found really powerful, I mean, maybe people already know this, but when I first started using it, I didn't pay attention to the pictures, uh, you know, their resolution, mm. but if you get really good resolution, it really says a zillion things. You don't even need any words, but just the picture is like, it evokes an emotion for them. And a lot of the pictures that I've gotten are from unsplash.com. Unsplash. Unsplash.com. You yes. have to buy them though? Uh-uh, free. And no, then because I'll, watch I'll, out though, because anything that says free, royalty free is not always necessarily royalty free, just an FYI. You really got to watch the copyright. Yeah, pretty much. It, I don't know. It's Everyone promotes it as it is free and they are nice pictures. Um, they just I want would, you to give them credit. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, exactly. You got to read the fine print on some of these sites. Mm -hmm. You really do because they're cracking down on copyright stuff. I have a client who teaches it and uh, she says people are cracking down. Mm. Um, the companies that own the, the, all the photos are cracking down and wow. definitely don't buy anything from Getty Images because they sued me for $2,000 and I had to pay them. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they sent a cease and desist anyways it's a long thing but i took it off and they still made me pay and i'm like even with an attorney and i'm like sure. <laughs> no fun hard lesson to learn so yeah and you you had bought an image from them no 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 i oh. didn't know better this was a long time ago i didn't know yeah. better i just it's on google oh i'll take it and put it on my website no yeah it's, no 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 but now i know better. now i buy photos anyhow um, good. Let's do a five minutes in the spotlight. Okay. So let's see. How do I pick? Uh, I have no idea. Okay. First of all, like raise your hand if you want a five minutes in the spotlight. So I actually pick somebody who wants it. Raise your hand. 
two of you. Only two of you. Okay. Well, then let's do two of you. We have probably time for two. So, Michelle, let's do four to five minutes in the spotlight. <laughs> and we can fit you both in. Because <laughs> I do have to leave like one minute before the hour. All right, Michelle, so tell us what you're working on or what we can help you with in the shortest amount of time so we can give you feedback. Okay, um, I did just Google it and it does allow you, Zoom allows you to do it for to both, Katrina. Perfect. Okay. So um, I uh, have a team now, which I'm very thankful for, but the struggle that I'm having is that I've been building this tech company for years all by myself, and now it's like the effort it's taking me to like teach each one that my team members that that it's going to ultimately like relieve me from having to do that but the effort to get them up to speed to actually be of help and use is killing me killing me i want to die <laughs> anyway i keep hearing katrina's voice in my head saying unload you know do get off what your your plate what what you know others can do and only focus on what you can do and Whew, uh, it's just, it's been, it's been months and I'm trying to work with interns because I really do believe um, a lot of this stuff. I do want a local team. So it's, it's just hard. All right. Well, we can take comments. I have a quick tip for you is whoever you're training now, make sure you're training them on recording. You're building tutorials as you train them. So if you're on a zoom call, you're recording it. If you're on a computer, you're screen sharing and recording it. And then if you're just on an audio with them and you're recording, make them listen back and write it down. You're paying them or they're working for you, so they need to write down the system so that the system and the instructions and the, what you're telling them is going into a training manual. Do that now because especially with interns, they come and go, so you'll need all those instructions. Anybody else have her? Gary? Anathea? Good, good counsel, uh, because right, the interns will come and go and all the knowledge will walk out the door. Yeah. So you want, to, you want to have it really recorded, absolutely. But task them to do it. Task them to yes. record it all or do it as you train, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm doing that and because okay. I definitely have seen the value in that. Other than it being painfully slow, uh, I know. Well, what you're teaching though, I mean, you'd have to teach it to anybody. It's not you know, knowledge that most people have in their head is, is your technology. So um, if it's other business stuff, though, I mean, you might be better off finding someone who's doing it for someone else instead of an intern that might be less expensive. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, you know, it's, it's marketing and then it's, uh, it's, it's definitely the order fulfillment and I'm work I'm gotten a lot better on my systems. So and I still have a little bit more work to do on the tightening up all my systems so that things are efficient, but I'm still fairly much in, in startup mode. And so that's frustrating too, because not all my backend like CRMs connect with the, the website properly. And I'm mm. trying to figure out how to bridge those gaps with maybe an app like Zapier or something, but it, it, it all, it all takes effort. And I'm just, uh, I'm putting it out there because uh, I mean, dang, you know, it's just intense sometimes. And I'm like, okay, I've got help. But now it's like, it takes me months to just to, I just wanted to see if there was any, I love what you're saying. I'll record. It's probably something I have to bite hard and, just, you know, get through. You do kind of have to get through it. Yeah, Anathea. So I think because I, I can feel your overwhelm and I'm in that same position. And I think the main thing, what helps me is to just make sure I do a check in to keep my body open so I can have magic come in and support me, mm -hmm. you know, because if we're tense and we're stressed, no, no magic is going to happen. And really, a lot of times there's a lot of magic that can happen just to help us. And um, the other thing that really helps me is that, you know, I put a lot of pressure on myself to get things done more than what I can actually do in one day. And, and, and I, I tap into the idea that, you know, I'm here for eternity. I don't need to do it all today. And, and you know, it really, it, it really helps. Uh, that helps a lot because I put a lot of pressure on myself. And, and so, you know, so what if we don't complete it in this lifetime? We have the future after that, you know. Yeah, and I don't know. You know, it just really it just helps me to calm my ass down. Yeah, definitely. I've been taking a lot more deep cleansing breaths lately and just trying to stay organized. 
um, so that I know uh, this day I'm going to spend this much time training this person because then I have to turn around and shift gears to be able to then take it over to that person, which is a different department now, and uh, train them. So, yeah. I had to let go of uh, tighter deadlines too. I'm, yeah. So, what you're saying is so true. I had to say, okay, so this thing's not going to get done this week. Oh, well, I guess it'll get done next week. And I'm not going to work until 2 a.m. or work on my weekends and give up my life to make it happen this week just because. Just because, exactly. Like this because morning. I wanted it to. Like, right. So, I'm just getting over it. I get over it and I just, I let it go. I let it go. Stacy, what did you, what were you going to say? Yeah, I mean, um, just the onboarding process and who you're hiring to. So again, where is it worth hiring greater expertise to cut down that, that training and that learning curve so that it's, it's such a balance, right? But the onboarding phase around vision and culture and what you want to create um, can really shrink that time too. So I'm not, to develop that as you go can be tough too, but really, really important. No, I'm really great, grateful. Just this week, I've, I've gotten two uh, experts, one in marketing and one in sales, saying that they want to come on and be a part of my tech team for, um, you know, to promote the technology as uh, sweat equity, because I'm in a position where I can't really pay. I don't have the funds rolling in yet. We're, we just launched a B2B mod, model, model. So anyway, I'm I think that's going to be easier to train them because they already have all that background knowledge. Interns come to the table with, you know, they, they just graduated from school and they're like, teach me what you know. <laughs> Help me gain experience. <laughs> Amanda. Yeah. I just wanted to say, just to reiterate that when you bring somebody in who has had a little more experience, the turnover, I mean the turnaround process of a manual that you can hand over to an intern your next round will yeah. be so much faster and more thorough and more easily followed because it's written by somebody who has had the experience before. Thank you for that. It's, a, it's kind of reassuring me that um, it's just a growing pain I'm going through, but it's a necessary one. So, And a money suggestion would be to where can you make a big pocket of money so you can pay people that can do it faster? And <laughs> uh, maybe, I don't know, just think of some other revenue streams that, that you can not spend a lot of time on that can bring in the money that pay the bigger people. I just hired a whole team to start doing Facebook ads for me, for example, and it's 1200 a month plus uh, two or $3,000 in ad spend. That's just going out, right? So that's not anything to do with my regular team and my regular business expenses. It's just, I want to try out that strategy and I didn't want to just dabble. I wanted to do it right. So I had to wait until I had the money to do it right. I wasn't going to half ass it. So thank you. You bet. So Anathea, can we do it in three minutes or less? And before you go, um, Make sure you guys, if you have a free gift, so if you have a free gift on your website, like a free report, a free audio, a free anything, a free newsletter, a free call with you, put it in the chat room with a link to the page. Do not forget the link. And all of that will go out to the whole group um, in the follow-up. We may not have time to say it all before the end of the call today, but we want to have it so it'll go out in the follow-up, okay? But I want to help Anathea with her challenge. So what you got going on, girl? Thank you so much. Can I share my screen? Because I just want you to look at my sales page and give me any feedback that you might have. Okay. Um, I have a course called Communicating to Create Connection, and I'm going to do a free webinar and so this is the sa the sale page for the free we webinar that is basically going to be do you guys see it i don't see, you it. see it no no we see a, bl oh. a black screen or something oh bummer okay so we probably don't have enough web uh, pull for it we probably don't have it. maybe it'll maybe it'll show to show up at some point well um, oh there it is so, okay longing to feel heard and understood yeah <laughs> there it is and, okay Awesome. Okay. So, so it's uh, it, the, the actual course is a course that I'll be selling. It's three, it's an online course called communicating to create connection. And I'm going to be doing this free webinar to uh, promote that, you know, to get people sign up on that online course. 
And so I just kind of would like you to give me any tips or tricks on the free webinar, selling the free webinar, you know, I'll, I'll be able to promote the free webinar, just put it out to different places and get people to sign up for it. But then do, do you think that it, the wording is okay? Um, you know, yeah, what I have scroll, there? All we can see is the header right now. Okay. So, so is this, this the webinar page or is this the sales page for the program? Cause it says this is the, the course this, for free. This is the this is the sales page for the free webinar, and in the free webinar, I will then sell the actual course, the uh, paid course. I gotcha. Okay. Well, the fonts doesn't stand out very well. Which one? I mean, it's not bullet. It doesn't. The text doesn't stand out very well to me. It needs to be in big checkbox and checkbox. What am I going to learn? That can from me, and maybe a visual too. What about you guys? Well, this, you know, this, this is all rough right here. I haven't even had a chance to template all of that. Okay. Yeah, so this is, all, this is all like jacked, basically jacked up. But if you, you see the words, any of the words that you think I should change, any of the actual copy itself, and I do need to reformat it nicer for sure. Um, I don't know. I think it's probably hit your hot buttons. We mm -hmm. might have to know a little bit more without, before judging it all, right? Mm -hmm. And well, I guess maybe my, how about this, just, just that, that picture right there and longing to feel heard and understood. Cause I think that's a hot point for women. That's what I hear all the time is I just want to feel heard and understood. And, um, and you know, how do you guys feel about that? Just that title, longing to feel heard and understood. And then what I'm saying is I'm not trying to sell them a class. I'm saying, join me for a live webinar and Q and A about my communicating to create connection course. I guess I should say communicating to create connection course there. But well, personally, if you're doing a webinar, I wouldn't call it a course. The course is what you're selling. A course to me is more than one thing. So I don't, that doesn't resonate. That doesn't sound right to me. So, okay. So long and feel heard and understood join on the for a live webinar and Q and a about communicate the, about the communicating to create connection. Yeah, but the course. enroll in course for free is throwing me off. Cause you're saying webinar and then gotcha. course. Got it. That's ah, what's funny okay. me. How about anybody else? Got yes. it. Okay. Yes, enroll in a free webinar. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Got yeah, it. Don't okay. talk about the, it being a course. It's not a course. You're selling the course, but don't talk about the course. In, enroll in course for, yeah, enroll in the free webinar. Got it. <laughs> okay. And uh, do you like the longing to be feel heard and understood? If that's what your people really want. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I hear from women. I mean, I don't know if it resonates with you guys. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah, I mean, we can maybe do some feedback for you. Um, make sure you put the page in the chat room and say any feedback welcome on my page really quick because I got to exit the call and get on an audio right now with a radio show. But um, I am so glad you were here and thank you guys all for sharing so honestly and about everything and your business and please come back to any webinar you want. There's different people on every single webinar. Come to the live event if you can. Uh, the next one's tomorrow. If you can still make it great, sign up, but quickly please, cause I need to know what you're eating. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I hope to see you again. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay, goodbye. Bye. Bye.